All right, so hey guys, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today we're taking a look at a company known as iBudget PCs. Um, so the main reason why we're taking a look at these guys is because it's been a long request from the guys on the Discord. And since we're kind of in this series on weird and obscure gaming PC companies out there, I thought that we might as well take a look at them. So today we'll be kind of looking over their gaming PCs. Uh, we'll be talking about the company in general at the end of the video and uh, just kind of talking about if you guys should buy one or not. And if you guys do end up enjoying the video, please leave a like. It really helps me out. Uh, and if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button all right so this is gonna be the main page of their website it actually looks pretty good in terms of the pictures selection that they took um, and all the different PCs that they have on here these seem like these are their own um, so yeah I don't think that they look bad at all I think it looks pretty professional and for how small this company is they have around two people that are full-time and two other people who work part-time so it's around four people um, for, for how small it is, I think it, it looks pretty dang good. Now, in terms of the selection of PCs that you can get, uh, it's not very large. There are six PCs that you can pick from, and they all kind of ascend in terms of pricing and performance. Um, two of them we aren't really going to take a look at today just because these really wouldn't be recommendations for gaming PCs. Uh, the main reason is because these particular ones um, don't really have a dedicated graphics card in them. These are more just like office PCs. So this one has an Athlon 3000G. Um, it's an okay APU, which means that it has a CPU and a GPU built on the same thing. Uh, it's great for value, but not great in terms of performance. Uh, so this is kind of the same story with uh, with this other one on here. It's still an APU. It's a little bit better. So these ones are kind of just like office PCs. Probably wouldn't recommend them to the broader gaming audience, and especially if you're looking for PCs at this price range. Uh, at this site, I would probably recommend just buying a new gaming console. All right, and another thing I want to add before we kind of move on to the actual gaming PCs, I really think that most companies that are trying to start out should be taking pictures of the systems that they build uh, as they build them. Um, if you're building a Minotaur PC, right, if they've ever sold one, they should be building it and then taking really nice photos of it uh, after they build it so that they can have them up on their site. It doesn't really look that good when you're using stock photos. I mean, the pictures themselves are pretty decent and show you what the case is like, uh, but it doesn't really show you what's actually inside and what the system's going to look like and what kind of fans and stuff like that it's going to contain. And I mean, this is the same gripe I had with the other company I took a look at, which was IWN Gaming PCs, and they said they're working on taking photos on their PC as they go along um, and I definitely think that's something that's really important to most people uh, when they are buying a gaming PC is that they know what they're looking at uh, when they get one so the first PC that we're gonna be taking a look at is going to be the Athos PC um, for $800 it's a pretty dang good system so you're getting an Intel i3-10100 this is a four core eight thread CPU it's gonna be able to play all your games uh, at pretty decent frame rates and then it's gonna be able to actually do some video editing tasks if you need to do that sort of stuff uh, then you get an RX 580 this thing's gonna be able to play most of the games at 1080p at pretty decent settings so like for instance I know that cyberpunk can run at like 44 FPS if you just max out the settings on it on this particular card uh, so if you're looking to play like cyberpunk and stuff like that at plus 30 FPS um, on really high detail at 1080p, this card's gonna be able to handle it. And then you're gonna get 16 gigs of RAM, kind of the standard at this price point. You're getting a fairly cheap motherboard, a 256 gig SSD to keep those boot times uh, pretty fast. And then you're getting a two terabyte hard drive for just bulk storage, which is nice to see. Then with all their PCs, you're getting a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth PCIe card, uh, and then you get the case fans and then Windows 10 Home. Now, what we're gonna compare this against is going to be VRLA Tech, but recently they have increased their prices even more on most their systems um, so we'll be kind of comparing those and you'll see them when we talk about them a little bit more um, if you guys have been long-standing viewers on this channel you know that VRLA tech usually has really good price performance but as of right now uh, pricing and demand has kind of gone up just because of this whole tariff situation and that everybody wants a brand new gaming PC with one of the new modern GPUs in it so that's kind of the reason why all these PCs have been going up in price and VRLA tech has adjusted accordingly all right so the Rogue itself isn't really in the price bracket of uh, the Athos PC, so this is going to be a $650 gaming PC. Uh, but if you do get some of the upgrades, so let's say I want to get a Gravis card upgrade to make the uh, 570 a little bit better. Um, let's make the, uh, the the cooler a little bit better as well. 
and then let's throw in the Wi-Fi adapter and that's actually brings us above the cost of this Athos PC while the Athos PC is still having overall better specs the CPU on the Athos is gonna be better than the Ryzen 3 3200G the motherboards probably gonna be around the same quality uh, but the storage configuration is gonna be a lot better on the Athos and I don't know what they have in terms of power supplies and I definitely think that that is something that they need to list because the power supply is extremely important for a lot of these gaming PCs uh, if you're having some with really low wattage and really low quality that can be a hazard uh, whether that be a fire hazard or if that's just going to be a lifespan hazard to your components um, so I definitely would feel better if they would list those power supplies on here but just by looking at the specs the Athos is going to be the all-around winner between these two gaming PCs now the next one that they have is the Nix, and this is actually real pictures that they took of their own systems uh, which is nice to see I think that they probably could have done a little bit better in terms of just like lighting and reflections and stuff like that um, so, you know, maybe you just get like a white backdrop and try to angle it so that the reflections don't hit the glass too heavy so people can kind of like see a chair that's right here. Uh, they see like the back of the floor and stuff like that. So um, I think that this picture is actually a really good picture, at least on this angle. You're getting the back IO, you're seeing the graphics card that's going to be in there, as well as the wireless PCIe card that they are using. Um, I definitely think that they could work on pictures a little bit, but this is definitely an okay one to have on their site And it's better than having any of those stock photos. So in terms of specs, you're getting a Ryzen 5 3600 a great overall CPU It's a 6 core 12 thread CPU. It plays games extremely well Whatever game you want it to play at and then it will render videos for you extremely well as well um, So if you're looking to like streaming, you know making YouTube videos or just gaming this CPU should be able to do it all for you uh, Now for the graphics card in RTX 2060. It's an okay card um, especially right now now, since there's not a whole lot of stuff available uh, the 2060 itself is okay it's not great at ray tracing which is probably something that I would not suggest you do with this card um, I'd probably just take the 2060 just because it has like all of those Nvidia software features that any of the RTX cards have um, so the 2060 is definitely a decent buy uh, at this price point. And then in terms of performance, it's just going to be able to play any game at 1080p at pretty decent frame rates. For RAM, it's around the same. It's pretty high speed, so you're not really going to be bottlenecking any sort of performance from this CPU. Uh, you've got a pretty nice motherboard. It's going to be a ROG Strix B450F. Um, again, a really nice motherboard from the B450 lineup. Uh, it should be able to do everything that you need to do. And then in terms of our storage configuration, it's going to be the exact same thing. And then everything else is pretty standard uh, down from here. All right, so the comparison is going to be the legacy. And this is kind of where you're seeing prices increase from the VRLA Tech site. Uh, so this PC used to be, I think, their $800 gaming PC, but now it is $1,000. Um, so this is kind of the one that we have to compare this system to so in terms of the processor the processor is a generation behind what this one is um, and the generation jump between the 2000 series to the 3000 series is a pretty big jump so this processor on this PC is going to be a good bit better uh, motherboard is probably gonna be a good bit worse storage configuration is also worse I uh, can't really compare power supplies because they don't list them and that's something that I really think that these guys need to do um, and then in terms of storage around the same thing I don't know what speeds these are but I assume that they're probably gonna be less than 3600 megahertz which is what uh, this system is rated for and then for the graphics card again it's gonna be worse uh, and then you don't really have any RGB fans or anything like that included as well as wireless adapters so this PC is again gonna be the blatant winner against what VRLA tech has and as of right now it's actually a pretty decent build all right so the next PC is the Hydra well I don't think it looks good at all with these fans and the stickers that are on them um, I honestly think it's a pretty well put together system for the price um, so for $1,350 you're getting the same processor that was on the last one except it's got the X indication which means that it is gonna have slightly higher clock speeds uh, but it's not really gonna be that much of a difference considering that you could probably just overclock uh, this particular CPU and get around the same performance as the 3600X but the main thing is gonna be the graphics card so the 5700 XT it's not gonna be able to do any ray tracing but it's definitely gonna be able to play any game that you want it to play at really high FPS if you're playing at 1080p and if you're looking to play at 1440p this card is also gonna be able to do the same thing play most games at high settings at 60 FPS this is a great card for anybody to have 
um, and it, it's probably one of the best selling GPUs of last year. And then in terms of RAM, again, it's the exact same thing on the last system, exact same motherboard as on the last system. And then for the storage configuration, we have about double the capacity on the SSD as the previous one. Uh, and then everything else, again, is fairly standard. So the VRLA Tech PC that we're going to be comparing this one to is going to be the Apollo. So this system is a pretty dang good system. But in order to make this thing competitive, I just wanted to upgrade the graphics card to a 3060 Ti. So this thing is going to be a little bit more money. Um, but the AMD Ryzen 5 3600, again, is going to be kind of on par with what this system has. A bit of a worse motherboard. And then, as well, a worse storage configuration. I can't really compare the power supplies. Um, and then you're getting the same amount of RAM, uh, but the graphics card is going to be upgraded to a 3060 Ti, which should be beating the 5700 XT in some games. Don't know about all of them, but even though it might not be beating it in terms of all out performance against the Hydra's uh, 5700 XT, uh, this particular graphics card is going to have a huge feature set, so you're going to be getting the NVENC encoder, which is going to help a lot with encoding video footage. Uh, if you're really like a creative professional and you're going to be using like the RTX voice kind of stuff, um, if you want to use NVIDIA broadcasts and stuff like that, those are really good applications to have, um, especially if you're looking to go into content creation, uh, which is not on this particular graphics card. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. You're getting an overall like pretty much the same PC, but a lot of the things around the peripherals are going to be worse. Whereas this one's really good all around. Uh, but again, the only thing that might be lacking is going to be that graphics card. But again, the only thing that might be lacking a tiny bit is this graphics card just because it doesn't have a, a wide feature set, but it's going to be able to play all your games extremely well. And then the Poseidon PC, I just kind of want to talk about it just because it's, it's not great at all. Um, for $4,000, you're getting a pretty terrible system, so you're getting an i9-9900KF, which is basically going to be a pretty old CPU here in a couple of months once the 11th generation of CPUs come out. Uh, and then as well, we have a 2080 Ti, which again, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, uh, since the 2080 Ti uh, itself is around the same performance as a 3070, and the 3070 is going for $500 right now. I mean, everything else isn't like terrible, uh, but again, I think that this is just extremely outdated, and in terms of pricing, I just wouldn't snag one of these. I would go on VRLA Tech, and anything around this price point, or even less than this, I think at like $2,000, you can probably find a better system. Uh, than what this system is offering. All right, so as I kind of told you guys, after we take a look at the PCs, I do want to talk about the company, and I do have an email between me and them kind of talking about company policy and that kind of stuff, uh, and I'm going to read that to you guys right now. Uh, so we kind of get a good idea of how this company operates and kind of their entire mindset as they go into building gaming PCs. So um, they said that they, again, have around four employees, including uh, himself and his co-CEO. He says that both him and his partner are full-time with the business, um, and he's talking about their testing process, and he says that it's really in-depth. Uh, they firstly run system checkers through Windows and run benchmarks to make sure all of the parts are working to their full capacity. Again, he didn't really provide any specifics. Uh, like he didn't tell me like if they run it through like Furmark and make sure that the temps are going uh, fine on other PCs and stuff like that. But at least they do do some sort of benchmarking uh, run through on their PCs. And then in the case of something is either defective or damaged, um, he says that although we rarely get support messages when we do, uh, they are concerning either crashes or damaged computers and shipping. So uh, he says that they go hands on and schedule a Zoom meeting as well as a Windows Quick Assist to help diagnose the problem. Um, he says if it's more of a physical problem with hardware, we have the computer ship backed and replaced within the same week. Warranties on the systems are mostly based on manufacturer's warranties for each individual part. Uh, we sign up each and every part to their maximum capacity of warranty to ensure the lifespan of each individual part. The time period customers have for returns are up to 30 days. The criteria for returns are non-physical damage, and if there is, we also subtract the specific cost of that part from their refund if they want to proceed. Otherwise, if the computer is in good condition, a full refund will be appointed to the customer. And then in terms of the quality of parts, he says that all parts are brand new in a box with wrapping. We do not purchase from third party sellers. They come straight from the manufacturer or the distributor of that company. And then this is kind of like their little about section about their company. He says about our company, our goal isn't necessarily to make money. I've been stumped all throughout high school about what I personally wanted to do with my life. All I could figure out was that I loved when people smiled. That was my only dream. 
I created this company with lower profit margins compared to other massive companies because I'm tired of those companies using cheap hardware for such an expensive product. So I figured why not do it myself? I could change the whole market as well as put smiles on people's faces. I'm glad to have impacted this entire market, having new connections, and most importantly, allowing for a bright future for everyone else who is interested in purchasing a computer but doesn't have the confidence or time to build it themselves. I've talked to many companies in this space such as NZXT, iBuyPower, etc., and I've successfully stolen customers from them because of the quality of our products. Hopefully, they'll eventually conform to using high quality products like we do, and then I'll truly know that I've made a massive impact on the tech industry for years to come. Now, kind of take that last section as you will. Um, I think the guy's heart is in the right place. Um, though I think that some of the stuff was kind of a little bit out there. I definitely don't think that NZXT and AI Power are, are really chronically providing low quality parts. I usually think that bad stuff from these guys, I, I can usually either put it on the person on the line not caring about what they're doing, not really a chronic company issue, or something happens in shipping. Like most of the things that I've seen from like NZXT, for example, is not plugging in cables right or having fans in the wrong orientation. So it, it's not really something that's gonna be detrimental to like the overall quality of the PC. It's just like dumb little screw ups that most people would have a problem with. Now, the one line that I thought was kind of weird is that they're not looking to make money. Um, which I find kind of odd uh, considering that most gaming PC companies I mean or most companies in general are looking to make money now I can't speak on what this guy's values are and stuff like that But again, I probably wouldn't count on that for just being the reason why you would go and buy from these guys It's really more about if they're supplying something that the customer finds of value and is better on the market And again, it's just gonna have to be a case of where each individual person is gonna have to look at their budget um, see if that PC fits within their budget and if the other PCs within that budget or within that price range are going to be better than what is on there. So even though I only compared it to the company like VRLA Tech, that doesn't mean that it's the overall best gaming PC out there on the market. Prices are really fluctuating right now. And considering that these guys prices have been fairly stable as long as you guys can I guess snag one at a decent price range I think that it's a pretty decent buy now I do think that they could do a little bit more in terms of uh, professionalism on their site and then again just in terms of website structure I'd probably change some things around if it were me um, but I'm sure it's not a huge concern to these guys as long as they are selling gaming PCs so that's about it um, I really don't have an overall recommendation on these guys um, if you want to buy a gaming PC from them, I think that that's great. I think that you should do your own research into what kind of specs you're getting for how much you're wanting to spend and if it just looks like a good buy for you. Again, I'd probably check out other videos that I've made on different companies, I guess, within like the same kind of category. If you guys want to look those up, um, they should be in a playlist called Weird Gaming PC Companies. And that's about it for all I have to say today. I uh, hope you guys have a great one and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.